So today we're going to be looking at non-equilibrium problems for objects on slopes and unknown directions of acceleration. So what does that mean? So that means if, say, we had something on a slope, like a little box, and it's moving, either it's being pulled up or it's going down. Um, so if um, the object is not in equilibrium, Um, if the well, the, if the forces on an object are not in equilibrium, the object will accelerate, and we apply Newton's. Second, so that's F equals M A. Now, for the force, we need to consider all the forces acting on the object. Um, we also we need to be clear as to the direction of motion. So if you think about our box here, if you, you could be maybe pulling it up the slope or down the slope. So the direction of motion it will be parallel to the slope. It's not suddenly going to float away into space. Um, it's so yeah, you need to be clear as knowing what's happening with what direction. Similarly, if you've got a case of a boat maybe being pulled, what's the bearing of the boat's motion? Um, <coughs> we want to resolve forces perpendicular and parallel to the motion. Now it's important that the net force in the direction perpendicular to the acceleration is zero. So if you think about it with our with our block, if the motor let's say it's sliding down our slope, so that's the direction of motion. This perpendicular force, the net force up here would be um, zero. Because if it wasn't zero, the object would float up, there would be an unbalanced force in that direction and it would start to float off into space and that's just not going to happen because we've got gravity acting on it, um, making it slide down our slope. So let's look at a few um, questions and we'll see how this works. So we've got a box of mass 25 kilograms. It's dragged Along, oh, along the floor, um, by a force of thirty newtons, acting at twenty degrees above the horizontal. Find 
the acceleration and the normal contact force. So let's draw a picture of what's happening. So it's on the floor, our box is on the floor, it's the force not on a slope. But if you imagine there's a, a little rope here and you're holding the rope 20 degrees um, to the horizontal and the motion is going to be along this. So the motion is parallel to the floor um, it's not moving at 20, it's moving in, in 20 degrees. It's moving flatly along the floor. Now, we've got a force pushing it down from gravity, which is going to be equal to 25 g, and then we've got our normal contact force, R. And the rope has a force of 30 newtons. So um, if we think about F equals M A for our acceleration, we need to think about what forces are acting on it. Now, the direction of motion is, this is the direction of motion, and this is the contact force, this is the weight, these are forces that are perpendicular to our um, direction of motion, so the net force of these is going to be zero. So we need to think about what force is going to come from this rope. So let's draw a triangle. That's 20 degrees and this is 30 newtons. Now we want to find the component of the force parallel to the motion, so it's going to be this bit here, this vector here. And so that would be 30 cosine 20. It's the component of F in the x direction. So 30 cosine 20 must be equal to the mass, which is 25, times the acceleration. Rearranging that, we'll have acceleration is equal to 1.13 meters per second squared. Now, we also want to find the normal contact force. So the normal contact force, R, is pulling in this direction. But there's also going to be a component pulling up from our um, rope. So on this, this part here, so F of Y in the vertical will be equal to 30 sine 20. And so the normal contact force plus our 30 sine 20 must be equal to um, the gravitational force in the Y direction, 25G. So if we rearrange that, we will get R equals to 240 newtons. <coughs> Let's look at um, another problem. So we've got a boat and its mass is 40 kilograms. Um, it has an engine providing a force to drive it forward of 30 newtons and it's moving in an easterly direction. But it is also being blown by the wind 
in a north northerly direction with force T. The boat um, the, the provides a force of 30 newtons in it's not moving in a third um, in I've got there in an easterly direction so the, the engine driving force is propelling it in an easterly direction but we've got this north wind pushing with a force T the boat moves at a bearing of 60 degrees find T and the acceleration of the boat so let's draw this so here's our boat and this is our T in the northerly direction and the engine's driving force of 30 newtons in an easterly direction. And we know it's moving on this bearing. And that's 60 degrees. So, we're going to resolve um, the perpendicular um, direction of motion. So that would be, if we look at this perpendicular, so let's look here. This is the direction of motion. And this is perpendicular to it. And this is T. So I'm just looking at this triangle here. Okay? And that must be 60. So the perpendicular to the motion must be T sine 60. Now let's look at now if this is 60 this must be 30. So then we've got this again is the direction of motion and this is going to come down here so this is our 30 this is our perpendicular to motion this is 30 as I was 30 so this bit here must be um, th um, 30 sine 30 now these two, the per the the um, component perpendicular to the motion, they must be equal. So T sine sixty must be equal to um, thirty sine thirty. Therefore T must be seventeen point three newtons from the wind. Now we can use F equals MA and we're going to resolve it in the direction of the motion. So now we know that T equals 17.3 um, the force from T in the direction of motion T cosine 60 and the direction of motion from the engine plus T, uh, not T, um, 30, 30 newtons, sine 30, must be equal to the mass, which is 40 times A. Now we know that T here is going to be um, 17.3 times cosine 60 plus 30 sine 30 
40 times a, rearranging that a must be 0 0.866 meters per second squared. Um, so let's look at something a wee bit more complicated. A table is sliding down a slope at 20 degrees to the horizontal. There's a resistance of twin of ten newtons acting up with the slope parallel to it. The table takes Um, t five seconds to slide ten meters down the slope from rest. Find the mass of the table. So let's draw what's happening. You've got this slope and the angle is 20 degrees. Maybe it's a bit, maybe it's a bit bigger. And now we've got our table here and gravity always acts on the vertical. So this is mg which we don't know the mass. And we've got 10 newtons acting parallel to the motion of the table and we'll have our um, reaction force, our normal contact force, um, perpendicular to the um, slope, and what we want to find is the mass. Now we can use our equations of motion to find the acceleration. So we know that s equals ut plus a half a t squared. We know the table has slid 10 meters down the slope. It started at rest, so that must be zero and we've got plus a half, we don't know the acceleration and we know it took five seconds to do that in. So if we rearrange all that we get a equals 0 0.8 meters per second squared. So now we can think f equals m a but we need to then think what um, are the forces, so we've got 10 newtons in this direction the contact force is perpendicular to the motion, so we can just ignore that. So it's not, it's not doing any, it's not adding anything. But we've got the weight um, acting down um, the horizontal. So there's a component which the gravity is pushing it down this slope. So we need to think about what that component is. So, we're going to make a wee triangle here. So here's a wee right angled triangle. Um, and we want to, our component of the, fo of the force parallel, parallel to the motion will be this here on our triangle. Now, so we need this angle here, but if you think about it, this is part of a bigger triangle. So this is a right angle triangle here, 90, that's 20. So this angle here, if we take 180 
minus 20 minus 90, we're going to get 70 degrees. So this angle must be 70 degrees. Um, and if that's seventy. Let's just draw that out here properly. Draw a bit bigger. So we've got this coming down here. And we've got a right angle. So this is 90. This is 70. So this must be 20. So this triangle is similar to this bigger triangle. So we've got mg here as a weight, so this here must be equal to mg sine 20, which is the component of the weight parallel to the motion. So we have the forces acting on our table are m g sine 20 and then we've got minus 10 because that's in the opposite direction so that's minus 10 and then we've got equals m times 0 0.8 now we can rearrange that so we'll have m g sine 20 minus m 0 0.8 equals 10 we take M out, we've got G sine 20 minus 0.8 plus 10, and then we can find out what M is. M would be 3.82 kilograms. I hope that helps.